Right. Well, good evening, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, and other assorted waifs and strays. I'm Den, and this is John, JDOD.com. Now, look, you have to admire the coffee. <laughs> we would be admiring John's gunpowder tea, but it's in a... Got the green tea here. Um, on the other hand, your, uh, your this, lo this... lovely Jude uh, did not admire your coffee. No, she didn't. Did. She didn't admire she wasn't too. She wasn't terribly impressed. No, she wasn't terribly impressed. So anyway, John, we've had a we've had a week in. Um, it feels like a week anyway, in Madrid, uh, with Sapphire, and it was better than expected. Yeah, I think it was. Hmm. I'm torn between SAP giving SAP a lot of credit for what I heard, and and wanting to push them even harder on the stuff I still want. <laughs> so yeah. I don't know which way to go. <laughs> so so. Uh, we talked a great deal in previous shows about um, about the developer situation, and, and that looks as though that's uh, starting to get some attention in the right place, isn't it? I think so. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the awareness of, of the obstacles around the developer issue are, are going somewhere. I had one SAP representative actually get angry with me. Oh, really? Uh, when I said that. SAP doesn't understand the problems of the individual developer. And actually, I like the fact that he was angry about it because it showed some gumption. Hmm. Um, it showed me that they really are, they think they're moving on this. And we can't talk a lot about exactly what they're trying to do, but we know there's app store things in the works and hmm. the whole idea of how, how is it you, you go from all this energy in the community that you hmm. rightly pointed out is already there. Hmm. Hmm. And how do, you, how do you take that and harness it and then expand it beyond the community and that kind of ties into the whole train race experience we have because gateway yeah. provides the possibility for non SAP developers to more easily tap into what's going on <laughs> in the inner workings of the back end right so what worries me about that is I mean train race was absolutely fantastic I mean wonderful innovations being said there and I do not use the I word that easily as you well know right and, and yet the, the sadness of it is is that you wonder how much of it's going to be lost mm. and how much of it's going to be taken forward. I would love to have seen some of those things taken forward. But, you know, it's one of those activities that um, the community is capable of making a noise about, so people in the community know about it, but the people who make decisions and concern themselves with taking products forward know about these things, and I sometimes wonder what they do. Right. If customers only needed skills in these new tools, then a competition like that would be good enough because they could send their people yeah. and they would come back with skills and that would accomplish the goal. Yeah. The problem is the customers need apps yeah. and developers need monetization schemes. Yeah. And that's where we get tripped up is we see this enormously successful event uh, where people are able to do things with SAP tools and UIs that you and I hadn't seen before sure. in this space. But then the question becomes, man, wouldn't it be great if I in, in two weeks if I could see that on an app store somewhere and download it myself? Mm. And the answer to that question is, you're not going to see that in two weeks. No, you're, you're not, not going to see it in two months. No, you're not. So when are you going to see it? You may never see it. Well, that's what we're wondering about. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. And the same with, uh, I mean, I, they did something interesting with Demo Jam, didn't they? In the sense that the in, in, Inno Jam, these bloody jam words, the Inno Jam winners competed at Demo Jam as well, didn't they? And they did, as a, uh, I believe they did fairly well. From what yeah, we I believe understand. they came in second, yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. So you've got really smart people doing really smart things that are of interest to the community. They've potentially got commercial value, because that's what I always, you know, I, mean, I don't care about toys, right? I care about things that have got value. And yet, we still have the problem. So, but then having said that, we had a, a very good conversation with um, a board guy who hadn't who said that the company hadn't really understood or hadn't really thought about the notion of bottoms up development, which strikes me as being a little strange given the size of the developer teams that they have themselves. But hey, we're going on to the influencer summit, aren't we? I wasn't gonna go, I'm gonna go now. Yeah, so it'll be interesting to see if they refine the message further for the next few weeks. Mm. The the thing that I was encouraged by was the past couple of events, it just felt like we were getting HANA jammed down our throats. Oh God, yeah. Um, and, and, and HANA was being presented as the solution to just about everything mm. that you could think of, just about every enterprise hang up. Um, I heard it could do well pacing at that point. 
world peace could be possible if you yeah, can sure. crunch the just get the algorithm right. <laughs> Uh, what we saw this time was a lot more context, more specific customer examples, sure. uh, and a more balanced view. Um, I saw less evangelizing and more customer stories. I was very, very encouraged by that, especially because I felt like SAP had really listened uh, to some of the feedback around that. And, um, and also, we had a BW on, on HANA example, mm. which uh, the Red Bull, and they had gone from soup to nuts, go live in three weeks, uh, which you know you really can't argue with that. So. We are seeing some customer stories like that, but on the other hand, um, it, the theme seems to be, to me, I believe that SAP can innovate, so I don't think that is a valid question anymore. The question is, can it scale the innovation? That's always the question, Yeah. you know, because you can point to a handful of HANA customers or a handful of mobility customers. Mm -hmm. Now we have 700 by design customers, which is a decent amount, but nowhere near world domination. No, nothing like <laughs> So can, is this stuff going to scale? Mm. And, and that's what we're all waiting to find out. Well, I think it comes down to the fact that um, SAP needs to understand that there's more than one brand, one brand of champagne kicking around, right? Mm. And that their, their um, love affair with uh, Verb Clico, while it may be able to continue, might have to be moderated against something a little less expensive and capable of reaching a broader audience. I think that's the key. And, and when they understand that, then, then they'll, um, they'll do a lot better. And I, I noticed from the, the conversation that you had with IAS, IAS seems to get this. Um, for the benefit of those who don't know, IAS is Bichelle's right-hand person, isn't he? Yeah, he also reports to Jeff Stiles in Ecosystem Marketing. Oh, right, so okay. He, he wears a couple different hats, but right. he does work closely with Bichelle. Yeah. Um, uh, basically a lot of stuff on keynote messaging, but also one thing that IAS has done that I think is a really great step forward for SAP is realizing that we can't just market the ecosystem. What we have to do is empower developers yeah. and then we can solve the marketing problem. Yeah. And I think he really understands that. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, that, that came through loud and clear in the, in the video that we recorded. So, so anyway, I think all in all, um, lots, of, lots of positive takeaways, but with caution. Portion. Well, yeah, because we've had so many good conversations, and yet sometimes we get radio silence in between these conversations, and we don't know mm -hmm. how much things are progressing, yeah. and and then we're really looking for, you know, the gut check, and then we talk to developers who are very talented, who could be instrumental in this, yeah. who still feel locked out, yeah. Yeah. and and that's when we just feel like, you know, how much credit can I give SAP? I, someone was giving me some some uh, hard time about this because they said, well, why can't you acknowledge that, you know, BW on HANA is like a killer app? And I said, well... Well, it isn't, is it? Well, I said a couple things. First of all, I said, you know, when customers come along and tell me how great it is, yeah. then I'll listen. And that's always been the issue around this stuff. Is, sure. You know, it will, once once we hear it from customers, we'll, we'll be happy to promote that message. But the other thing is... With SAP, there's always nuances, and that's the thing. You might see someone on a keynote stage and say, oh my God, Red Bull, that's amazing. And then you dig into it a little further and you realize that, first of all, we talked with Red Bull behind the scenes, and while they had some nice performance improvements on the back end, the business users saw no appreciable difference in functionality yeah. or usability because they were already using BW Accelerator and getting pretty good speeds. Yeah. So that's one example of it's not that it's not a good story, but there's always reading between the lines. And so what we really want to see is we don't want to have to read between the lines. I mean, happy customers speak for themselves. And so that's really, I think, what when I think ahead towards the rest of the year, mm -hmm. when I think about Sapphire, I just want to see a lot stronger message from SAP around line of business on demand, for example. I still feel like we're missing some key pieces to what's going on there. I just think I just think that what they ought to be doing instead of sort of blowing their own trumpet is getting as many customers as possible on stage talking yeah. and talking about the things that they've been talking about for some years and demonstrating value. I've, I've seen it done by other vendors and I know it's incredibly effective so we'll see but hey we've only got one more to do and that's the Influencer Summit in freezing cold Boston in December. Why do they do this? I don't know. Is this just for the is this just for the nutcases and diehards? I guess Boston's like a traditional location for the event and so they just kinda tradition, you know. But it's December, mate, you know? It's cold. Last year they did it in Palo Alto. 
but you, but that was sort of problematic because you, me, and Tom Raftery almost got our butts kicked by the a few guys that were there from a totally different line of work in the U.S. military. Did I did I go there? Yeah. Oh yeah, I remember that one. Remember yeah. That? Oh god, yeah, 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 yeah. Wasn't yeah, we probably don't want to repeat that. Didn't one. have a really enterprising discussion. So no, 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 no. That better was... off in Boston, anyhow. Yeah, yeah, possibly so. <laughs> anyway, from sunny southern Spain, me and him. GDOD World Headquarters, signing off. Cheers. Cappuccino. Ciao.